All right, y'all. So this is PC balling on a budget. And I got this from Goodwill for $125. Now, when you think about Goodwill, you think about old clothes, old shoes, old, old antiques, but you don't really think about old electronics or old tech. And they have that there too. So I actually got this off of their bidding site, shopgoodwill.com, where you can get all that stuff. You just bid for it online. And I got it for $125. Now, I, it was $125 even because I rounded up for charity. I thought the whole thing was for charity, but I guess they want me to round up for extra charity. It is what it is. And right now i'm actually balling on a budget because my girl wants to go on two trips this year not just one but two trips she want to take us and the kids on and of course i'm paying for it and on the second trip i told her if you can get the hotel and you can get the tickets to the theme park that we're going to for twelve hundred dollars i can do it and she was like, I don't think I could get it down to that much, but I think I could get it down to 14 to 1500. But don't worry, I got you on that extra 200 and 300 dollars. And in my mind, I'm like, why don't you just meet me half? What, what you mean? I got you on that extra. It really isn't about that extra. I have a price point and that's what I want to hit. But you're just going to cover the rest. It is what it is. Um, but you already know. Happy wife. Happy life. So let's get into this because I want to actually open and show you all the experience after the shipping, how the shipping looks, how the PC looks and what condition it came into. And this is a HP Pavilion. It has 11400 or i5 core 11400 CPU in it. No graphics card. It comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and also 256 gigabytes of storage um it doesn't have a nvme slot so i think that's why i actually got it cheap because it's just an ssd but we are going to add an ssd to it all right so we're going to go over the specs of this 125 dollar desktop this is an hp pavilion it's equipped with an i5 11400 cpu that got six cores 12 threads it has 16 gigabytes of ram and 256 gigabytes of storage now this doesn't have a slot on the motherboard for an NVMe, so it just comes with a ss standard ssd and we are going to add some more storage this SSD I got off of AliExpress and it's 512 gigabytes, giving it over 700 gigabytes of storage. And I got it off of AliExpress for $20. Now, I know there's tariffs, but if you could find something that says ship in the United States, then you can bypass that tariffs. That's what I think what's going on and why I got for $20. Um, I'm also adding a graphics card that I got for $118 from Newegg. This is the Challenger ITX Intel Arc A380. Now this does come with six gigabytes of VRAM. Super alloy graphics card, don't, don't forget about that. It does have DisplayPort and HDMI on it. And I think this desktop only comes with like power, comes with 300 watts of power. And just to see how well this graphics card does, I am going to be pitting it against the 3050. Now this is a six gigabyte um, version that doesn't use any external power and is the low profile. I got this a while back for only $179. And I get to finally actually test it out. Um, you could find one for $200. And since it's a regular desktop, you could put the regular version in that you could find for $200 on uh, Amazon every day of the week. And yeah, so with so with the ASRock Challenger, this comes to under $300. With this one, it just comes above $300. So you can decide which one you want to go with if you find a deal like I did on shopgoodwill.com. Now, I know I shop there a lot and I'm really taking chances in gambling because they don't really test all their products, but they do put it away. And that's why I want to do the unboxing to show you how everything looks. All right, I got my Home Depot box cutter. Um, 
I accidentally take these home just because I'd be leaving them in my pocket <laughs> when I'd be working and I just never take them back. So I got a few of these, but let's open this up. See what it looks like. It is actually packed very, very, very good. Uh, it doesn't have the peanuts in it. That's good. And they really put a lot of bubble wrap on it. It's looking like a SpongeBob episode. So I'm going to try to cut this without scratching the desktop. I'm pretty sure I got scratches on it, but still, I don't want to be the reason. I just throw that on the floor and you can see the Intel i5 and they actually have the specs up here. Like Intel i5 11400, 256 gigabytes of storage, 16 gigabytes of RAM, operating system, window 11, which if you don't know, if you ain't shot from shopgoodwill.com, they actually uh, reset all of their PCs and stuff like that. And that's probably like the best part when you open it, Windows is already installed. So you don't have to do any really extra work and <laughs> y'all can't smell this but it smells it's not bad smell it's just whenever you have electronics held up or shipped for some reason they come with like a smell to it but um we're gonna get closer look on the inside let's open it up <sighs> oh it comes with two sticks of ram that is awesome all right i'm gonna get a top view of this uh just give you a second okay so this is the inside um and what's crazy is i actually see a nvme slot in there i thought it just came with ssd and the motherboard didn't have an nvme slot but it actually does so let's take this part let's see how it looks um i think we start off with this bracket then we're going to Take this out. I have worked on these before, so I do know these are actually connected. Yep. And then we're gonna take this off so I can get to this. And like I said before, it does come with a NVMe slot, so I didn't even need to get the uh, SSD. I could have just got an NVMe. I guess the SSD makes it add almost a terabyte. So it's still cheaper in the run instead of just doing $50. But you can put a one terabyte in there. And then we're going to look at the RAM. And it is actually dual channel. That's what makes this PC actually pretty awesome. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it is eight gigabytes, one of 16, and it is 3,200. AA, so 3200 megahertz or MT slash S mega transfer per second. And then the power supply, I don't have my glasses on, but if I look at it, it says 310 watts. So that is better than what I thought. I thought it was like 290 or 300 watts. So 10 more wattage. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I can put a different card in there. Huh? And then it's 80 plus gold uh certified so yeah if everything works <laughs> we got a deal of the millennium falcon oh real quick i just want to show y'all because i find this actually pretty nice the front uh <laughs> the front connectors so yeah you have a headphone jack you have four usbs i think these are 3.0 the two front 3.0s regular USB, then you do have a USB-C 3.1 and you do have an SD reader. So the front IO is pretty nice. The back on the other hand is pretty bad. You do have an HDMI and you can use that. And you do have a prehistoric cable. I think that's VGA. And then yeah, only four more extra USBs, which isn't that great, but can't complain too much. And it didn't come with a power cord now that i think about it i'm gonna check in there but i don't think it came with a power cord i got a power cord it only cost me two dollars at 
uh, Best Buy doc, at Best Buy dot com at Best Buy. Um, if y'all pay for it, it's around ten dollars, so you can add ten dollars to the bill. I think we have to put the graphics card in that right now. Let's look at the graphics card. Importion. These are so cheaply packaged. Yo, first time opening, I never even checked it out. Like I said, I got six cores. Oh no. This one actually does need. <laughs> this one actually does need it. I thought it was the one without the connector. All right, so I kind of fumbled a bag right there. Um, I didn't even, oh my God, I thought it didn't come with an eight pin. I thought it, I looked around, but I guess I should have just Google. Does a challenger need an eight pin? I just got decided to do this build, but it does need an eight pin. So you do need a connector. We are going to be connecting this to this. Unfortunately, that means we can't add the 250 gigabyte SSD. We're just going to take that out um but i am buying this 512 i'm not gonna get a terabyte this is 512 for 30 dollars and yeah i'm just gonna sell it like that with a 512 for 30 dollars but i'm just going to, uh, to buy it right now <laughs> i'm not gonna let you see that information but i am going to connect this and i'm still going to download games so the 250 says just know that that 512 is coming in a couple of days um I might have that hooked up but i'm still going to try to get as many games as i can so there might be a fewer games i don't know if call of duty ever going to fit on this thing but marvel rivals and them other good games should do just fine off of steam so yeah let's put this challenger in connect it ah <sighs> sometimes i just work like faster than my mind and i just feel like oh job's done and i don't think about it and i'm like oh got a good price <laughs> it's just it's it's bad like it's just let's just go ahead with it what what bad could happen well we found out but now let's add a connector that i got for seven dollars and then thirty dollars for nvme does that still make that under three hundred dollars let's find out yep 275 plus 32 and oh plus a connector plus was at eight dollars because it has some change still under three hundred dollars with this um so i don't recommend getting this uh challenger if it is over 118 i guess it's some leeway to 130 but uh yeah now what if we put the 200 dollar graphics card in there so what is that 214 so if you put the you get a 3050 you can get a gaming pc for under 400 dollars um but yeah this is just future self this has eight pins so uh -huh. all right now that we put in there we're going to add this connector now the reason why i had these connectors because i do watch a lot of these videos and i was planning on doing like a build like this i just didn't know this one came with the eight pins i thought it didn't uh yeah kind of loser right there <laughs> shoot Shaq and a fool but um, I'm gonna hook this up just like that and then this connects into here so yeah I'm gonna take this SSD out I'm gonna try to connect as many games as I can to this NVMe I'm just gonna sell it with the 380 in there I'm gonna let them know <laughs> that it's connected this way but yeah, uh, I'm not going to sell with the 350 because that just makes it hard and I'm not going to have that much overhead. I'm at least trying to make at least what turn into like a hundred dollar profit might turn into like just like a seventy five dollar profit. But that's all right. Seventy five dollars is good. Uh, and plus I get a video out of it. So, yeah, let me put this together. Let's try some games out. I don't know how I'm going to do this with downloading games and stuff. And uh, let's get into the game all right so first off i tried out clear obscure expedition 33 at the low presets and 80p using xess upscaling and upscaling and it didn't break 60 frames per second 
but it was playable at around 40 frames. Next, let's try a couple of esports games. And first, we're going to try Marvel Rivals in a 1080p with their low preset and XESS upscaling. It did get over 60 frames per second, and it was quite playable and enjoyable. We also have Call of Duty with their basic preset at 1080p with XESS upscaling, and it was getting into the 70 frames. It was playable. And yeah, I can recommend this for esports games. Last, I did an in game benchmark with Black Myth uh, at 1080p with XESS slow settings. It did not get 60 frames. So I switched over to FSR to do frame generation, and it actually got up to 58 frames per second. So yeah, I can't really recommend that game. All right, so it's time to change to 3050. Um, yeah, hopefully. This one doesn't have an 8 pin connector, but it is a low profile. It actually does come with a smaller bracket, but I don't have a small form factor to put this in. So you cannot put this in a single slot. And this might be just the best chance for me to actually test out the 3050. So. All right, I do not know why that was so hard to put in. I don't get it. It was just so hard. It just wouldn't slip through that slit. Um, I had to put a little bit more force into it, a little more oomph, but I got it in there. Uh, it doesn't do any externals, so I ain't got to worry about that. Um, after switching to the RTX 3050, the Expedition 33 was maintaining over 60 frames and outperforming the R380 by a significant amount. And this is at low settings with the LSS enabled. And yeah, it was a lot playable. Then we switched over to Marvel Rivals and this was maintaining over 70 frames per second, a lot better than the Intel card, but they actually play quite similar. So something I did not expect. And then we went to Call of Duty now this game, I didn't add any upscaling just to make it a little bit more fair. And this car was performing the same, if not a little bit better than the art card with no upscaling in paper. Now last we got Black Myth, in-game benchmark, everything on low, DLSS enabled with no frame generation, and it was getting 78 frames. So I can recommend this for some AAA games. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, and there you have it. everything that could go wrong with this video went wrong. And it all started with this card that I thought didn't need external power, but turns out it does need external power. So I had to get an SSD to PCIe adapter. And because of that, I couldn't use the SSD that I bought and I had to get more storage using the NVMe slot, which isn't really a problem. I was just trying to save a little bit more money, but I know all those problems there overshadow the crazy deal that I got from shopgoodwill.com. Just for $125, this desktop came with a Core i5-11400 CPU that's six cores, 12 threads, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And you can see how the Arc A380 paired with this desktop. Now, just for comparison, I did put in the RTX 3050 this should show you how well this car holds up 1080p in esports. It does well, but AAA games and older games with its not so good drivers does struggle. Whereas the 3050 is just a lot better. And I'm going to show you the specs comparison, comparison right up here. But yeah, the 3050 is just a lot better in raw performance. And with its upscaling DLSS, you're never going to have any problems. But other than that, that will be the end of this video. And until next time, it's your boy Chef for you.